a few videos ago, I showed you my collection of wood stoves from Bushcraft Essentials. And I said that was a primer video where I would begin doing a review of each of the stoves. Well, today I'm going to do a review of the first of those, that series. And this is, and what a name it is, the Outdoor Pocket Micro EDC Box Stove. I think I got that right. And if I don't, I'll put on the correct name on the stove. A big name for such a small stove. If you're interested in seeing how to get the most out of this little stove, keep watching. All right, you know, I don't think I did say that right in the opening. It is the Bushcraft Essential Outdoor Pocket Micro Stove EDC Box. Yeah. Okay, it's a small stove. It's a very small stove. And when I did the intro video and showed the lineup of stoves, I declared that this was not a joke, this was not a novelty, that this was in fact a functioning stove. And it is. But you have to understand just what it's capable of and what you should not expect it to do for you. Okay, so for the last couple of weeks, I've been doing a series of tests at home and in the woods with this stove to see what I could get from it, the most I could get from it, the best performance you could get from it. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to show you those things in a second. But before we do, let's just talk a little bit about what this stove is and what it isn't. So, it is a very small stove. It will perform, but it won't perform like a larger stove. I mean, that should come as no surprise to anybody. And the reason I did this video first is not just because, well, it can make some sense to start with the smallest and work up to the biggest, but also because it's late fall now, and right now it's 10 degrees Celsius here in Nova Scotia, and that, and I'll put the Fahrenheit on the screen, um, it's getting cooler. It's not going to get a lot warmer than this as the, as the fall goes into winter, and I know from experience that small little stoves don't do well in cold weather. They just don't have the critical mass of heat to maintain a fire and heat a pot of water of any size for that matter. So I wanted to get this video done as soon as I could and with that understanding, that's part of the philosophy, this is not a cold weather stove. This is meant for warm weather. Now I've seen this referred to as an emergency stove or a survival stove. It is neither. In fact I don't think there's any th such thing as a survival wood stove. And let me explain. If you are in a true survival situation, a live or die survival situation, I don't think you should be fooling with any type of a wood stove whatsoever. If you need a fire, truly need a fire, you need it for one of two reasons, or both for that matter. One is heat, and the other is to signal for help. Uh, that's a big fire on the ground. That's what it is. It's not a stove fire. If you have the option to build a small fire in a stove, you're probably not in a true survival situation. Now, you can, you're welcome to share your opinions on that, but that's my thoughts on this. So what is it? It's a micro stove. It's an EDC stove. It's something that you can pack away in your pack, your shoulder bag, your glove box of the car, and have it available to you to make a small cup of tea not to cook a meal. So, I know it's a wood stove and it's made to burn with wood and I'll talk more about that in a second, but I consider wood or consider wood its secondary fuel, not its primary fuel. I think its primary fuel is a sol fu solid fuel tablet. So, what did I bring with me? Oh, I'll probably be showing this Again, I'm not going to demonstrate this today. Um, I have used and I did a lot of testing with Esbit tablets in this stove, thinking that this was primarily a stove that you might want to use an Esbit tablet in. And it is. You can use Esbit tablets. It's just, it's just the right size for it. In fact, the company it does say that this would be good for use with Esbit tablets. But what I found is, in you putting an Esbit tablet in this, a full 14 gram tablet, is that I could not reliably bring two cups of water or 500 mils of water to a full rolling boil. It got hot. Plenty hot to make tea or coffee. Plenty hot to make a, a freeze-dried meal with, but not a full rolling boil. And the reason is, is well, the reason I was looking for a full rolling boil, of course, is purification of water. If I, and I quite often do just use lake water or stream water for my meals, so I like to make sure that it's, it's safe to use by bringing it to a full rolling boil. If that's not important to you, if all you want is a slow simmer of bubbles on the bottom of your water, then you'll have no problem getting that with a 114 gram tab of, of Esbit. Now, I can get it to a rolling boil, but in order to do that, I had to modify the stove. The problem being, and this is a 
14 grab esbitamlet in its case. I'm not going to open it up for this demonstration. I will put the results of my tests in the video description below. But what I found is when you light the Esba tablet inside the stove, it'll burn hot and bright and fast. Rather than 11 minutes that Esbit claims for its tablets, it, they burned out, or it burned out my testing in nine minutes or less. The water got hot, but it just didn't come to a full boil. And what I determined is, is that as this heated up and is in such a little contained area that the Esbit tablet melted faster than it was designed to do and some of it was dripping through the holes on the bottom of the floor plate. So I was losing fuel and uh, so what I did, it doesn't get any simpler, this is a piece of aluminum flashing that I cut to about an inch and a quarter in square and uh, punched a little hole in it with a paper punch because they're e that easy. And this will drop down inside of the stove and I place the Esbit tablet on that. That blocks all those little holes in the bottom. It extended the burn time well past the 11 minutes that, uh, that the company uh, says that an Esbit tablet will do. It didn't burn quite as bright, quite as fast, but it brought two cups of water to a rolling boil, just, and then it burnt out. So again, I'll put the results of that in the bottom of the, in the video description under this video, if you want to see just how th that turned out. Okay, so if Esbit's not the best fuel for it, and you know, it's convenient, there's no question, Esbit is convenient. It is not that easy to get a hold of here in Halifax anymore. I'd have to order through the uh, Amazon, and Amazon is charging outrageous prices for it. Our one store that was selling it uh, on the shelf is no longer carrying it, so it's not an easy thing for me to find. But I did find something that works very well, is very accessible, and very inexpensive. Off to one of my favorite bushcraft supply stores, the Dollarama, one of our dollar stores here in Halifax, and I found fire starters in a package like this. Now this package cost me a dollar and 25 cents, and I have 12 cubes or 12 squares of fire starter, and I've got a few here out of the package that I'll show you in a second. And I've used these. I mean, they're, they're, they're nothing fantastic. They don't smell the greatest. They're supposedly, they're made with 100% wood fiber and wax, uh, paraffin wax of some type. Uh, they're cheap, but they work. They work as a fire starter, and they work. Here are two of the cubes side by side. I break two of these in half and they will fit inside. In fact, you can fit three down inside this stove, but uh, three tablets kind of take up too much space. Uh, you know, the, they, they'll fit in quite, with a little bit of looseness, but I get much better performance by putting two of these inside of this stove, lighting this up, and I can easily get two cups of water to a rolling boil in 10 degree Celsius weather. I did that yesterday just to, before I come out just to confirm that it would work in the cooler temperatures. And it does. So that makes this type of fire starter, and maybe you can't find this exact fire starter, but I think if you look around you'll find some of these inexpensive fire starters. They are about an inch and a quarter square each. And a pair of them will fit inside of this stove. They light up readily. They burn for a long time. Uh, in fact, if you wanted to, I'm not saying I'd recommend this, if you put three of them in, the burn time is close to 30 minutes. Now, it's not extremely hot, but close to 30 minutes burn time with three of those things. That means you could actually cook a full meal on this. Uh, I, I hesitate to recommend that because that's not what this stove is intended to be for. I mean, look how small it is. You know, the heat's all going to be in one small area anyway, so you'd be moving any fry pan or pot around to prevent hot spots. But you could do it, I guess. All right, so that's one option, is that solid fuel, that fuel fire starter. And I did come up with a few others. I tried Zip Cubes, the original ones. What a mess they make. They are smoky and smelly. Uh, if you ever used a Zip Original, you know it's a kerosene-soaked, I don't know what the crystal material is. Uh, it worked. It brought two cups of water to a boil, barely, but it did work. There's also a, a Zip Organic. I don't know what makes, oh, I guess it's wood chips and wax again, and they call it an all-organic fire starter, and it works. It's slow, but it works as well. So there are other fire starters that will work as fuel inside of this little stove. What else did I come up with? 
So while I was at the dollar store, I picked up a package of 12, what they are call uh, votive, not votive, no, it's smaller than a votive, vigil. This is a vigil candle, so it's just a, twice the height of a tea light, but uh, smaller than a votive candle. And you buy 12 of these, and again, it was cost me, I think, two, maybe two and a quarter for the 12 of them. And uh, I wanted to know if I could pull the candle out of the little aluminum casing. Oh, look at that, it does. Now I've got a little aluminum casing that I can use to hold alcohol and use that in the little stove because this fits in just perfectly inside of the stove. So yeah, I did that. No wick, nothing, just the alcohol and lit it up and it brought two cups of water to a boil. Just over, well, not quite an ounce, about three quarters of an ounce because it burns kind of fast when you have it without a wick or any, any kind of a pressurized system. But it did, it worked just fine. Now the nice thing is, I guess I still, I have a full pack of candles. I haven't used this one. I did try it with the tea light, but you can heat your water. Now you're never going to get it to a rolling boil with a candle, but you can get it hot, hot enough to make a cup of tea or a cup of coffee, provided it's clean water that you start with. You could use the candle for that. So that's a good combination to use with the little stove. Now, one of my viewers, I, I had seen this, but uh, I just wanted to uh, give the credit to one of my viewers, Flash Geiger, and I'll put, if I've said that correct, incorrectly, I'll put it on the screen anyway. And he said he went to the dollar store and he made a small uh, alcohol stove out of, well, I actually bought two of them so I could show you. This is from the dollar store. This is shave cream called Barbasol shave cream, the, the little travel sizes that you can get. Dollar, dollar and a quarter? I think it was a dollar and a quarter each for these things. I bought two of them and I emptied one of them out and I cut it to one inch and one and one eighth inches tall and then I have some of the carbon felt just a small little section of carbon felt that I rolled up and dropped inside and this is just a small wick stove. Now I have seen people make little pressurized stoves out of these as well but uh, you know I really like wick stoves and the reason is is they light regardless of the temperature. So even if it's cold, this will light. It won't get really hot right away, but they'll light and they're a lot more reliable than are the little pressurized stoves. So yeah, now this is what's really cool. One half ounce of alcohol, I was able to bring two cups of water to a full rolling boil, not quickly. Again, I'll put the times in, my, in the video description below but two cups of water to a full rolling boil and still had about two minutes of burn time left on that one half ounce. That is efficient and inexpensive and a great option and it just drops right down inside. Okay, those are some of my thoughts on using the stove with fuels other than wood, but I think you'd probably like to see this used with wood, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'll take it apart show you how it goes back together, set it up in the fireplace here. We'll get a little fire going in it, and it is a little fire. I'll talk a little bit, some of the tests I did in, with wood in this, but I'm gonna tell you right now, I'll not be able to reliably, I have done it, but it's just nine times out of 10, I'm not able to bring two cups of water to a rolling boil. 10, 12 ounces, that's about what I consider good using this with wood, and even at that, it takes a lot of work. Okay, enough talking. Let me set it up in the fireplace right here. I'm just using the fireplace as the windscreen, and we'll see if we can't get a little bit of water heated up to make some coffee with. All right, here is the stove in its little case. I'm already getting a little bit of dirt on it from carrying it around. Um, I've shown this before as it comes in this case, but I've made two small additions that I'll share with you as I put it together. First off, put the case aside. As I mentioned before, you can use a carabiner to hold the stove together because each of the components have a small hole in it that can be slid onto a carabiner. And of course, then that carabiner can be slid onto something in your pack, your belt, or wherever you want to carry it, I guess. And I have one other thing that I've added to it, but I'll have to take the components off of the carabiner first. I'm gonna be laying them down here, put the carabiner aside. So here, each of the components as normal. Each of the pieces, two side pieces, front and front there and back. Fire grate, 
pot stands. And here's the small piece that I made to add with it. And this is just a small piece of aluminum flashing, about one and a quarter inches square, with a little hole punched in the side of it, or in the corner of it. And that's for use with Eslet Esbit tablets. And I mentioned that a minute ago, that I get a much better burn with it, and a longer burn, and a full burn, meaning I can actually get my water to a boil, if I cover the plate up inside of the stove. I'll demonstrate that once I've got it assembled. Okay. Let's get this assembled. So, setting the pot stands apart for a second. We have the floor plate. So, it's, you know, like many, uh, of course I've got the dirty side out. I like putting the dirty side in, just to well, keep clean, I guess. Like many of these little puzzle stoves, takes a little bit of coordination. So, each of these three plates have a notch in the bottom there that will match up with three notches on the fire grate. The notch, the fire grate does have a very tiny notch right here and that matches into the front where the feed port is. Now like I said it's a little bit of fiddling. Not something you want to do with cold hands, certainly not with gloves on. Put one side in, the other side, and this is things where it gets just a little bit fiddly. There's always this last little component here that has to match up because you're bending things ever so slightly to get them to match in. There is another way of doing... There we go. There, snap. And there's a, that little tiny notch or non, not tiny little raised portion does snap in there just to hold it together so it doesn't fall apart. Um, yeah, there is another way of doing it, but I just don't think it's quite as secure, and that's where I actually turn the plate sideways, and then I slide down one of the side plates. Um, I'm not going to bother showing it, because, you know, this is something that you figure out for yourself as you, as you assemble the stove, and you get a little bit of experience, which is the best way for you. Pot stands will go on top, of course. Nothing unusual about it. That is a small stove. Oh, yes, I mentioned the little plate. A little aluminum plate. And that would just drop in to the floor, right down inside, and I put my Esbit tablet on top of that. Okay, stove's assembled. I am going to set it up in this fire pit, not for protection from the ground because it doesn't generate that much heat, just a little bit of wind protection and a place to place the stove. And we'll get a little fire stove started in it and see if we can bring some water to a boil. Okay, when it comes to sitting up and using this uh, outdoor pocket micro stove EDC box, I think I got it right that time. When it comes to using this, it's a good idea to have it in a sheltered place with, a, with very little wind because it can be quite subject to breezes. And since I just recorded the intro, the breeze has started to pick up. So I appreciate having this little fire pit to set this up in. Make sure you don't push it too far into the earth, that it occludes air hole air coming up from the bottom underneath the plate. That's going to be quite important. Have a bigger than you think supply of small sticks handy to continuously feed the stove. And this stove does require a lot of feeding. And uh, I know it's sitting on some black old uh, remains of a fire here, so it's a little bit, maybe a little bit difficult to see where it is. I think. If it wasn't for the breeze, I'd sooner sit this on top of a rock where I can just have it almost at, uh, you know, a better level for working with. But uh, we're going to use it down here just to protect it from the breeze. What I have noticed at times, and uh, I don't think if it, well, yeah, there is something here I can use if I need to, is sometimes I want a little platform outside of the stove to make the sticks a little bit more level going in. Now, when it comes to setting this up with wood, there's a couple of ways of using it. I tried what is you you would expect the stove to be used and the way we're going to use it today, which is to feed in through that large open feed port on the front. But I like using a vertically stacked preload of wood in most of my wood stoves that I can light with a top-down burn. And yes, you can do that with this stove. But it, the load is so small that it goes through it so quickly that there's hardly any advantage to using it that way. Plus, you could break up a lot of small sticks. I mean, this is uh, two inches high, the burn chamber. So not even, not even two inches high. And again, I'll put all the specifications for the stove in the video description below. 
this is such a small burn chamber, you're going to be breaking up a lot of sticks to get that full for a top-down vertical stack burn. So you can do that, and I would recommend actually you try a number of different ways, but the way that I'm going to try it, or not try it, the way I'm going to use it today is just a traditional feed in through here. Now, this is not the type of stove I would practice my bushcraft skills with, lighting with flint and steel or anything else. Um, use a fire starter, and I'm using a small commercial fire starter here that I think I'll light it and then shove it in because it takes a bit of heat to get the sticks lit in this smaller stove. Great stuff, this fire starter. All right, put the lighter away and right now I can start feeding sticks in knowing that it's not likely to go out of me. Um, do you know what I would recommend? A bellows, another pot. This is one of the, another one of my dollar store little things. Just a pocket bellows, collapsible tube of some type that you can use for blowing on the stove. Because if you take your eyes off it for a minute, it's going to burn out. And if you have a little bit of coal base going, you can probably get it back to life using the pocket bellows. Once I get enough sticks in here, I'll put the pot on. So the pot I'm using today, you'll see it in a second, is the Camel Will 1.2 liter pot. It is as big as you want to go. Uh, you know, realistically, a GSI glacial, glacial cup or something like that, or one of the little titanium 750 mil cups, that would make a much better choice for this little stove. But you can do it with a slightly larger pot, just not too large. 350 mils of water, so not two cups. And that's what I'm going to put on. If I can balance it here, and that's the other reason why you want to use a small... Ah, going to have some trouble here. Keep an eye on it for size. And as you can see, it's smoking, but that's not because of airflow. It actually flows quite well. Uh, wood may be slightly cold and damp. And you're probably noticing right away, I can't see the feed port. That's the other reason why I like to have it on top of... Will it balance? Yeah. I like to have it on top of a stone so I can look and actually without having to get down on my hands and elbows to see if the fire is still going. Now we can see the fire going with it right now because of the flames. But uh, it can be a little challenging. That's why I like to have it raised a little bit and tend just a lot of tending you know it's already going through the sticks got to feed them in keep them going now a lot of the work is still being done by that fire starter and if you're going to feed small little ones in through the top you can do that it just means you're constantly lifting your pot off of the fire I'm actually a little nervous right now that that is balanced well enough all right, fire's going well inside. Uh, I don't think you want to see this in real time. <laughs> I think what I'll do is I will let the camera run, and when it comes to editing this video, I will speed it up at least four times. I expect it's going to take me at least 10, maybe even 15 minutes to bring the cup and a half of water that I have in here to a boil. But let's just uh, follow along, and as I said, I will speed it up for the video. Okay, so this is real. I mean, this is exactly... Well, I guess if you really wanted to consider this a survival stove, and again, I don't, uh, you're going to be using twigs that you find in the woods. And you can see the amount of work that I'm having to do to keep this fire going. Can it be done? 
Yes. It can be done. Is it worth the effort? I don't think so. Way too much effort. So while this can be used as a wood stove, I think it's much better using it with some type of solid fuel, either Resbit or one of the other fire starters, or the little alcohol stove, which works amazing with this. Unless this is just what you like to do, sit and feed small stoves. I mean, there's a fire going in there, as you can see. Now, some of the issue is the choice of wood that I have right here right now. These are twigs, mostly hardwood, some softwood, broken off of trees, so they're horizontal branches, not vertically standing wood. What would have been a lot better is to take a single big piece of wood and split it down into small pieces that I could, uh, would be a lot drier on the inside, a lot more surface area. But that's not what I did this time. I mean, I did. I have in the past. I just wanted to show what it would work like, or in this case, not work like, work well. So, out of pure determination, I am going to get this water hot. But I'm not going to make you watch me go through that process. I'm actually going to cut away. And when it's come to a boil, or as close to a boil as I'm going to get it, then I'll bring you back and show you. Okay, in full disclosure, I gave up. It was just way too much work trying to get that water to a rolling boil. Now, I got it hot enough to make coffee. There were bubbles on the bottom of the pot, but it just didn't come to a hard rolling boil, which is what I wanted to demonstrate with this stove. Uh, that's enough to make coffee, but it's just not everything I'm asking for from a wood stove. But then again, I don't know that I had really high expectations for this as a wood stove. A lot of it had to do with the temperature, the ambient air temperature right now, 10 degrees Celsius is cool for using a small stove like this, that is. It is also the ground is wet, it's also the wood is a little bit damp. All factors that play into whether or not you're going to get a good fire. The smaller the stove, the harder it is. You have to pay attention to the very basics of fire, dry wood, good kindling, good environmental conditions, to, and a lot of attention. As you saw, it was just a lot of work to keep this going. I have been able to do it, just not reliably. So what can I say? Don't expect to use this to bring two cups of water to a rolling boil. One cup of water, warm enough, that's all, water that's already clean, warm enough to make coffee, yeah, that's not too hard. But two cups of water to a rolling boil, I don't think so. Not unless you're using the little alcohol stove that I showed you, the Esbit tablet and the method I showed you, or the uh, inexpensive fire starters. They work really well, amazingly well. That's probably what I would use primarily with that, either the alcohol stove or those cheap fire starters. Okay, it was a lot of fun. I'm not giving up on this stove. I still have fun using this little stove, but uh, it's a little cool and I really do want a nice hot cup of coffee right now. So I'm gonna break out another stove and work, on, work with that. Okay, if you have any questions, if you have any comments on how I went about this, what your experience is with these stoves, please put them in the comments section below. But until I come back with another one of the Bushcraft Essential line of stoves, get out and explore and take that path less travel. It'll make all the difference. Bye for now.